Welcome to the Dell Wamsley Radio Show. Listen and grow as Dell questions the status quo, encourages you to think differently, and empowers you to make a better life. Get ready as Dell challenges core beliefs, seeks the truth, and reveals the roadmap to the lifestyle you really want. And now your host, multi-millionaire, national award-winning investor, CEO and founder of Lifestyles Unlimited, Del Wamsley. Welcome to the Del Wamsley Radio Show, where the hype ends and the help begins. I'm your host, Del Wamsley, and as always, we're working on your financial freedom. With me here today on Tell Dell Tuesday is Gaurav Goyal out of DFW. Gaurav has uh, been a Lifestyles member since around 2016, and he has accomplished quite a bit. He's been a lead investor, uh, which means he's the lead syndicator in as many as five deals at the same time, and he's been quite successful at it. Gaurav, welcome to the show. Thank you, Dell. It's uh, I'm happy to be here. Gaurav, let's, uh, let's start today with your unique uh, circumstances that are not so unique in our society, believe it or not. Uh, you came from another country, and when you came from that country, you had been given a plan. I mean, come to America, and at, you finish the story there. Uh, and how do you do that? Let's, let's talk, start with that, because I'm believing in my mind that the story that you were told isn't the one you ended up getting rich by doing. And I don't know if that's true or not, but I'm going to leave it up to you to tell the story. What did they tell you when you come to America? What do you do? That is correct, Del. Um, when I came to America, my focus was study hard, work till I'm 65, and I'll have enough money for the life that I need to live, for my kids' education, for my retirement. That was the roadmap that I had when I first came to America. And how did it change and what made it change? I'm, I'm just curious. Um, so I did everything as I had planned in my roadmap. I got an MBA from a top university. I went into consulting. I was making good money. I met my wife, got married. She was working. But we had two or three different shocks. One was the 2008-2009 crisis where we lost a bunch of our 401k but I was still willing to hope to rebuild. And then we had in 2015, 2016, another crisis, election or some political change that caused stock market to dive again. And I just got tired of seeing or being stressed about this constant upheavals that have nothing to do with what I'm trying to do, causing impact to what I can afford for my family or I, what I can say for my retirement. Now, you had it made. Highly educated, great job, wife works also, had your kids. I mean, you were the American dream family. Those two things were enough to knock you off kilter on that plan. What was your first thoughts when you, and I'm asking you this because I actually went through the same thing. OK, but mine was 87, the you know, Black Monday or whatever it was. And uh, I remember the gut wrenching feeling that made me decide I had to look for something else. What, what were your thoughts at that moment and how did you put together your plan of what you were going to do to change that feeling? Well, I was feeling of helplessness because even with an MBA, I was not able to make money in the stock market. You, you tend to think that if you're smarter you can make more money. No, it's, it, it's, it's based on how hedge funds and other people make decisions. And for me, it was not helping that I, my 401k was not growing. And all the knowledge that I had learned was not helping me grow that. And then I had kids back in 2009. And I started to see that I need to start saving for that education, you know, and I, I didn't see that coming together. If I start forecasting 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, I look at my 401k, I look at how my company is doing, the, work, the company I used to work for, I just couldn't see a path where even if I worked till 65 or maybe even longer, that I would have enough money. Um, the expenses kept going up and the money didn't, just wasn't there for me to feel like I would have that life that I had dreamt about. So how did you approach that? How did you attack that situation? 
Well, I knew I had to do something else. So either it was what, what my usual roadmap is, quit, find a different job that pays more money. So get a 5% increase, get a 10% increase. Maybe you're lucky you get more than that. But that was really what I had done until that point. But I didn't see that making a meaningful change in my life. Plus, with more money comes more taxes, more responsibilities, less time with the family. So it was kind of a rut that I felt that I was stuck in that I had to break out. Um, and that's when I found real estate. How did you find it? Uh, a colleague of mine was a lifestyles member. And I had no background in real estate. Um, and I just was talking to him about my challenges. And he said, he, he was not advocating for real estate, but he said, take a look at it. It has helped him. So I said, you know what? Whatever I'm doing for the last 15 years or so is not working. So I got to try something different, at least keep an open mind and attend a seminar or, or, or a conversation or, or talk to other people. Um, and that's when I went to a lifestyle event to try to understand more about what real estate is and what lifestyle is. So when you showed up, did you go to a free workshop first, I assume? Yes, I did. I did. I one of those evenings after work, rushed to uh, the location in Dallas-Fort Worth, uh, the offices, you know, attend one of those evening workshops and learn about what, uh, real, what uh, real estate is and how I could how it could help me. That was really what I was trying to figure out is I have no background in it. Uh, is this really for people who have experience in it? Is it people like me? I just had no idea. What is it that intellectually you could wrap your arms around that made sense uh, to get into this stuff? I think it made sense to me. I- I'm an engineer background, so mathematics and, you know, hey, if, I, if you can logically explain things to me, I get it. I don't like the pie in the sky model. And what I liked is that it was broken down in numbers about how is this actually possible? And the second part about that was just talking to people around me, I felt like they were all like me. So I was not meeting a whole bunch of people who were in different scenarios who I couldn't associate with. They were like me people learning about stuff that I could understand. And that was a big change for me. So from there, you sign up and go to the two day, I assume. I always like to ask people, what were the aha moments in the two day? I'm sure there's more than one, but you know, what do you remember? That's a long time back now. Um, I think one of the big ahas was that I can do it. That was the biggest thing. And I could do it as a passive because real estate as an outsider is intimidating. If you don't know, if you're not in it, because you don't know all the different options you have to invest in real estate. I always felt that I have to be a landlord to invest. I found out that, no, I can be a passive investor. I can invest my money with someone who is going to own the property or or run the property for us. And that was a huge aha, because at that time, both my wife and I were still holding a job, and I didn't foresee a lot of time for me to go do this on my own. Did you do passive deals before you did lead deals then? Is that what you're saying? Yes, I did passive deals for approximately two years before I became a lead. What did you get out of that? What did you learn by doing that? Um, I think one thing was proof of concept. It's what we we talk about in engineering. It's like, hey, I'm going to try putting in X amount of dollars and see what happens. And one thing I found was distribution started happening, right? And um, in two years, the first sale of the property happened. Um, and I met more people around who have done this for longer as part of the membership that made me feel comfortable with this is real. So once my first investment went in and started producing returns, I started investing more and more money, and pretty much I invested all our savings into real estate in those two years. Um, the second thing was I got more comfortable learning about real estate, You know, going to the different road trips, that Lifestyles organizes to go visit someone's property and and have those open discussions about how they do it. I felt this was something that I got more comfortable with, that became more knowledgeable about how people run properties and how they make money for us. In life, I call that patterns. Did you start to see the pattern? Did it start to become clear to you? Absolutely. It. Yeah, I could absolutely see a path for me, a new path. 
Because when you go on those road trips, the one thing that always gets me, and I've been doing it for 30 years now, it's kind of rinse and repeat. <laughs> we, yeah. Yeah, I've been doing it for 30 years, and every time I go, I'm still excited to go see something new, but it's the same old thing, right? It's You get the model or you don't get the model, and if you use the model, it works. So um, you were passive for two years. Now let's talk about what stimulated you to look into being a lead investor. So going through all those road trips and talking to other people about who've been doing this, I enjoyed the experience of of, of being part of that. And at, at one point, two years later, there was two things that happened. One was there was a certification course that Lifestyles introduced that was a opportunity to learn anything that I, I had not learned. And the second thing that happened was I felt more comfortable about, I could do this. This is exciting. And I want to try it out um, uh, as my next career path, right? So two years seemed it was enough time for me to learn enough, to be comfortable with it, to say, I feel confident I can do it. So you decided to do it. You went through the training course. And how did you feel about the training course? Did it give you the confidence to do it? Did you feel like it had enough information there for you? Absolutely. I mean, a training course cannot change, cannot take over anything that you personally experience. So I had that personal experience. But what the training course did was fill in a lot of the gaps, right? How do you acquire a property? How do you find a property? How do you read a particular document, legal document? How do you negotiate contracts? How do you operate the property? How do you dispose of a property? Some of those gaps that were not by personal experience, it filled a lot of those. And those courses were given by experts who've done this hundreds of times. And that was a great experience for me to feel comfortable about any part of the life cycle of ownership uh, that I didn't know. So after you take that course, you become what we call an aspiring lead. And you start putting together your team and you start putting together your investors. Um, how difficult was it for you to put together your team and your investors? Um, it wasn't at Lifestyles that difficult uh, because Lifestyles creates this, this wonderful networking environment where you meet vendors and you meet like-minded investors. So I could build the vendor team from the broker, from um, the legal representation, um, um, from the tax consultant, from operational consultant that Lifestyles provides to investors who would want to invest with you. So it didn't take me too long. I would say a few months once I had decided, my team was ready to go. So you've done how many total deals as a lead now? Five or six? How many have it been? I've done five. Five. And I, I don't know how to ask this other than I'm just going to group it into one big group. Do you have any understanding of how much capital you've raised between those five deals? Uh, it's north of 30 million so when you worked in corporate america did you believe you could go raise 30 million dollars to start a business <laughs> not at all not at all um i was running big projects but it was never just me running <laughs> finding the capital to buy businesses so there it is you did it you proved it could be done you did it on your own and um i've always said real estate changes people i thought it changed me um it, it made me grow in so many different ways as you go out there and you get into these new things and you have to learn new stuff every day and until you've been at it for many, many years. And then it's new stuff every once in a while. But we're going to take a short break. We'll be right back with Gaurav Goyle and the Del Wamsley Radio Show. to creating the lifestyle you really want. Keep listening. The Del Wamsley Radio Show returns in moments. What does Del Wamsley, CEO and founder of Lifestyles Unlimited, 
think you need to succeed in this market. It's time to buy, and so you better get prepared. You better get educated. You better get your money right. You need to get involved because you're going to need the financing. You're going to need the vendors that we have available to us. You're just going to need the interaction with people. You need to immerse yourself into real estate. Start your real estate immersion with a free workshop live online at lifestylesunlimitedworkshop.com. You're hearing the Dell Wamsley Radio Show. Want more life-changing knowledge? Access our podcast and listen on demand at lifestylesunlimited.com under the radio tab. Now your host, Dell Wamsley. Welcome back to Dell Wamsley Radio Show. With me here today on Tell Dell Tuesday is Gaurav Goyal out of DFW. And uh, Gaurav has been a lead investor in five deals. He started as a passive investor, then became a lead investor. And he's at the point where his uh, portfolio is starting to turn over, which we'll get to a little further down the line. Let's talk first, uh, Gaurav, about you said it was pretty easy to put together your team and to raise your capital, and you raised a large amount of capital, no doubt. Uh, let's talk about the first deal. What went into finding the first deal, and uh, how did you know it was the, the one you wanted to, to work with? Um, the first, it, it's important to me that the first deal, and since then every other deal, is in Dallas Fort Worth area. So I wanted to make sure that I could go to the property, be at the property within 20 minutes, 25 minutes, you know, reasonable amount of distance where I can spend the time that I need to, to learn. Um, the second was I wanted to have a size that made sense because as a first time lead, however learning you have, I expected that, you know, there'll be some learning uh, process and I didn't want to buy something that was too big and then have a, a, a you know, something happen that I didn't have experience in and that impact the property too much. So I, I want to buy something that was small, uh, smaller, near my area and in an area that was growing with a strong population of people who want to move in, connected by highways, good school district. So all the things where, that, that, that help, helps a city grow, I want to make sure that the location was such where um, um, it would grow in the long term versus speculate on an area uh, where people are moving out or we don't know for sure people are going to move in. So that's, that, that was sort of the criteria that I used uh, to identify and eventually purchase my first property. And this first property you've had since 2018, I see here that you're getting ready to sell it. Um, can we talk about what kind of returns we made for our partners? Uh, and uh, was there any refinancing done during that long period of time? Or did you just hold it and then get ready to sell it now? How do you, tell us about the story. Yeah, we we uh, we we had planned to sell it or refi it in year four. Um, we are right now in year five, um, so we are pretty close to where we wanted to be when it comes to doing a transaction. Um, and uh, we are expecting about 100% return of the capital at the total, including distributions and everything, at the point of sale for this property. Now, on the second one you bought, I see you've already sold that one. Yes, I have. That was a 64 unit. So 2019, a year later, you, you went through the first one. A year later, you bought your second one. And not that much larger. You kind of like that size, huh? Yeah, you know, it was more of an opportunity to find the right deal. You know, I, I was looking, you know, in the range. But, you know, you can't pick and choose the exact size. You look for the right deal in the range that you're comfortable with, in the area you're comfortable with. So this came along. It was a little bit more work than I than I had in my first property, but that was okay. I feel comfortable managing the first property. I can take on a little bit more work, um, and then we bought this property in 2019, um, the 64 units in Irving. And that one you've put down here that you had a 95 percent return on. Yeah, we sold it in two years. So basically, we hit our goals um, three years earlier than planned. So we basically took advantage of the fact that the property was performing well. They, we had a, a, a buyer who was willing to pay the money that we wanted. And we said, you know what? We're giving the money three years early. No one's going to complain about it. So we decided to sell the property. Got you. Now, from that point on, you've really accelerated the size of the properties you purchased. 
Um, the next one, 2020, a year later, and I'm seeing a pattern here, about one a year, which looks pretty good. You did 137-unit property. Uh, how did that one work out for you? Um, we bought that right in the middle of COVID, <laughs> right when COVID started. So it was um, it was a property that was across the street from our first property. And um, eventually our goal became, after we bought that property, was we'll combine the operations of the two property, even though they're in different cities, they're actually across the street from each other. And we will create a operational efficiency of managing the two properties. So that's what we ended up doing um, for both the properties is to manage it from one office, one set of office expenses, and then also eventually sell it as a group, as a portfolio, as a Tucson. Now, did you do that? Because I see here, it's, I think the notes say that you are, you are in process of selling this one or not? Yeah, I'm in the process of selling number one and number three. I can so they were together. Was, yeah. Okay. Very good. Now, now we get into the the interesting part. This stuff was purchased uh, right at COVID, and the whole business world kind of flipped upside down and crazy during COVID. And now you've got the other thing that happened. The Fed has come in and just jacked interest rates hard. Um, are you able to operate through these two challenges that just kind of came out of nowhere? I think the this property that we bought out of COVID has been the most challenging property for us. Um, um, at the same time, we have a fixed rate loan, so we don't have the issues with changing interest rates on this. But it's it's one of those properties that um, you know just just uh, has been you know uh, uh, has, has taken a little bit more work than what we had imagined. Uh, but either way, we are, we are in the process of combining and selling, and we're going to make money on it too. So um, I strongly believe in what you say: never lose money. <laughs> And even with a very trying property, we're still going to make money for investors. Good. Now, you went way larger after that, so I'm not going to go into that at this moment. Uh, 265 units for the next one and then 332 units for the next one. Boy, that's some some growth right there. Let's talk about, uh, if we can, uh, we, when you got into these deals and, and you started operating them, how did you build your team? Because you were expanding quite rapidly. Um, well, I think I think for me the the big thing was to have the people I trust and um, have the support I needed. So, for example, I you know I have had the same mortgage broker since the beginning. Uh, I've had the you know we had the same broker for the for most of the properties from uh, from purchase perspective. Um, uh, we've not hired anybody as, as such. We use third-party property management, but we've got more support from them to help us run some of these properties when it comes to managing them. So it's just been more of my sweat and equity more than anything, along with the team that I've uh, in the last several years put together. Gaurav, I speak constantly about the fact it's not the money, it's the lifestyle. You've made the money. We've, you testified to that. So the question is now, what in your life has changed? What What is the future for you and your wife and your family? And what has been and will be the quality of your life difference? Um, I think it has changed a lot for me. And I think there's uh, three ways I can quickly say it. One is personal stress level has reduced because financial part is taken care of. Number two is family. I've got more time for the family. And number three is really what I can do like you said, give back, right? So I'm involved in a um, not-for-profit organization that assists in improving a area where we own a property. Um, in another pro- area where we own another property, I'm involved with the Chamber of Commerce, attend their events, um, get more involved in civic affairs. So those are the three ways that it has really changed my life where that wasn't something I could fo- foresee doing in what I was doing earlier before real estate. What did people say to you when you told them you were going to do this crazy thing, real estate? I'm talking about people at work. Oh, my gosh, you're going to quit your job. What are you doing? You know, your friends, your relatives, your family. What, what kind of responses did you get when you said, we're going into real estate? Well, you know, it's, I kind of empathize with them because they were where I was before I learned about lifestyles. 
So there is a sense of I don't believe that. Number one. Number two is there's a little bit of I wish I could do what you're doing, but I don't feel comfortable jumping in and doing what you're doing. So um, certainly there is a level of disbelief, and then there is also a level of I, I'm kind of I'm, I'm, I, I kind of want to have the flexibility you have, but I don't believe I can do it or I don't want to do it right now. So there is definitely a sense of attachment to their current um, sense of this is more comfortable to me versus, hey, let's go jump, try this. I have helped a couple of people do it, but for the most part, people are reluctant to make the jump <laughs> because they're, you know, it's 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 different and, and people are just not ready to give up what they currently have. For yourself, how do you see the future? Well, you know, Del, things have changed the last two, three years. I've achieved the financial freedom more than what I wanted when I started joining Lifestyles. And my wife and I have these conversations where she wants to continue working. And then I've been thinking, is growing real estate really what I want to continue doing if I've achieved what I wanted to achieve financially? So I think my future is going to be more around um, giving back uh, to lifestyles, uh, to civic, uh, becoming more of a passive. So less acquisition, more, se- more eventually selling properties and maybe doing investments um, uh, on my own on a side. Uh, but, but really more about have, using the time that I have or I can have now for things that I enjoy more than just buying more property so, I can, so we can uh, amass more wealth. I totally understand. It's the natural progression. It really is. Once the money is no longer the problem, then you've come to the conclusion it never was the money. Money was only necessary to get you what you really wanted, which was the quality of the lifestyle. So now yeah. you're there. That's smart. I ask people that all the time. How much money is enough? And they can't give me an answer. You know, that's like, well, more. <laughs> that's enough, right? <laughs> Always more. So I'm glad to see that you've you've got that in a different perspective than a lot of people do. That's really good. By the way, which one of your properties was the, on the road trip? I forgot which one the name was. Uh, Avanti on Central. That was the property that was on the Masters Tour. Uh-huh. Um, uh, a couple of years ago when, when, when we had it in Irving. Um, but we've had all our four, uh, well, three out of the four properties have been on road trip, and there is the fifth one should be on road trip soon, too. Or oh, that's Excellent. more local, Dallas road trip. Well, we appreciate you doing that and giving, giving back wherever you can and coming on the radio and sharing your story, going on road trips and sharing your story. All that is beneficial because, you know, if you don't, then the next generation doesn't get what we were able to get by having other people show us. So it's always willing to give back. Uh, anything else you'd like to share in the last 30 seconds? No, Dell. thank you for all you're doing for Lifestyles, and I appreciate you having me on the show. All right. For the rest of you out there, remember this. It's not the money. It's the lifestyle. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you later. The information and opinions you hear on the Del Wamsley Radio Show are those of the host, Del Wamsley, his guests, and his callers. The Del Wamsley Show is for entertainment purposes only. Please consult a professional regarding your personal investment needs. Nothing presented on the Del Wamsley Show constitutes an endorsement, recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or security.